Hello, uh, my name is Dean, and I'm going to tell you a little story about a bug and a patch. So uh, I work for a company called Omix, and we make uh, scientific instruments. Uh, you don't have to know too much of the background there. The only thing I have to know, these instruments are fairly large-ish, and uh, they're kind of expensive, so when a lab buys one, they generally buy one, and then people there share it. And uh, where you're sharing a scientific instrument or you're sharing a computer, uh, some things stay the same, and the thing is, you don't want other people messing with your settings. So the, uh, a fairly early feature request that we got was uh, let's add user profiles. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is kind of the UI that we created. You get uh, some, uh, some users on the left side, you select who you are, and uh, when you start the instrument with that, your settings are loaded on top of it, and uh, you're happy because the person who was using it before you didn't mess anything up for you. Unfortunately, there's a, there's a fairly bad bug uh, lurking behind all of this. And uh, I am going to tell you about the bug, but without actually talking about the bug. So instead, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our team. And the interesting thing about our software team is that almost every person on the software team is from a different, comp uh, from a different country. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, while we have a lot of randomization there, one thing that we all have in common that's the same for all of us is all of our first names uh, fit very nicely within the ASCII character set. So uh, you may see where this is going. So the feature was developed, it was tested internally, and uh, the bug was not discovered. Then uh, there was an external beta testing program, and uh, it didn't come up with uh, anything like that. Fortunately for us, we hired a Canadian before the release. <laughs> and uh, as we know from this conference, Canadians are very nice people. And uh, this person in particular was extremely nice because uh, on their first day on the job, uh, he saved our bacon. He discovered uh, the bug. And uh, this was not a software engineer, this was an application scientist, and all he did was, well, his job. He went to the instrument, he typed in his name in the user profile creation, and uh, as you can see in the UI, everything was fine. But then he discovered he could not use half of the features. And indeed, somebody looked at it, and uh, the log file was full of errors. And then somebody just looked at the file system and noticed that their name is completely mangled in the file system. And the entire software team just face bombed and said, all right, Unicode. And this is a fairly terrible problem because you can't just tell users, well, if you have a na name that doesn't fit with what we support, you can't use the instrument. That's not a thing that you should do. Uh, and uh, it is one of these problems where you kind of question, did we do something fundamentally wrong here? Did we uh, just mess bad enough that it's not gonna be fixable? At least not easily. Uh, and the thing is, we did actually think about Unicode. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about our stack. So we have uh, QML, uh, Qt QML that we use for the UI. We have Python that we use quite extensively for things that Python is good at. Among other things, completely uh, being able to script any action on the instrument from the user side. And then we have C++ at the core of everything, and uh, that just binds all the, the two other languages with quite extensive bindings. And it just forms the core of what we do. And the other two languages, well, they, uh, they do the sensible thing. They say all of our strings are going to be UTF-8. And C++ just says, we have a collection of bytes. It's up to you to interpret what it is. And for our, for our code base, it seemed very sensible that all of our strings should be UTF-8 because, uh, well, the other two languages do that. So we, we can just shuffle things around. That's fine. Uh, but then we started using file system path. And it turns out that file system path does have an opinion about what encoding it should be, and it should be the encoding of your platform. So it depends where you run this. And our mistake was we were just passing this UTF-8 string from the UI uh, directly to file system, for the file system path constructor, and we should not have been doing this. The, the correct thing to do is to use this utility function that's great, it's also in the standard library, it's called uh, U8 path. And that does the correct thing. It interprets a std string as if it was UTF-8 encoded. And, and, and that's great. And that's what we should have been doing all along. 
So now we have a good a little guideline. Well, in our code base, because we use UTF-8, we should not be using file system path, we should be using uh, U8 path. And that's great. Uh, that would solve uh, the bug, definitely. But this is a lot of manual work to go back and fix all of this, and then after that enforce all of it in code review. And what makes it worse, that constructor uh, at the top, it's, it's an implicit converting constructor from std string to path. So it's very hard to track down. So of course, we want to avoid manual labor. We want to uh, employ tools. We already use Clang Tidy quite extensively. But no one on the team has actually written a custom Clang Tidy uh, rule, which would have been applicable here. We know it's possible, but no one has done it. It's quite a steep learning curve uh, with Clang. Uh, and we want to fix this as soon as possible. So we didn't do that. Then we consider, well, uh, strong types are great. Uh, maybe not that easy to uh, make in C++. So we could wrap the thing and just provide, uh, repeat the entire very long uh, API. We could do the evil thing and uh, inherit. Uh, maybe not such a good idea. But in any case, the, it doesn't really solve our original problem because now we just have the guideline, well, don't use file system path, you just use this custom our path class. And that, again, brings us to the fact that we have to enforce this manually. And then we do something terrible. So we say, if this was our API, we would, do, uh, we would just deprecate the old API, and we would uh, add a little string there that says, well, please, uh, th this API is not good for these reasons. Please use the other API that's better instead. But this is not our uh, API. This is a standard library one. But we could actually just make a little patch and apply this in the CI node that uh, runs our static analysis anyway. And this started to seem like less and less like a bad idea. <laughs> so we did it. And uh, you know what? Uh, the CI just ran over everything. The compiler started to be our friend and it reported every single place where we were using this implicit converting constructor and told us, well, this thing is gonna mangle your strings, so don't do it. And we, within half an hour, we replaced all of the usages with the correct API. We fixed the bug, and we fixed two other bugs that we didn't even know about. And it was great. So we patched the standard library header as a very cheap alternative to Clang Tidy. <laughs> this is terrible, don't do it. It worked really well. <laughs> Thank you.